Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we have the new Tier 9 Freemium Dockyard German Cruiser Import, the Schroeder, to review for you guys today. The Schroeder is... Uh, for me, it's a bit of a pain for a couple of reasons. The first one being that the Siegfried was originally the German large secondary cruiser, but then her secondaries were nerfed with the Commander rework and never buffed out. Rather than buffing the Siegfried secondaries back to their original state, the devs saw it fit to just go ahead and build a whole new ship, put it in a dockyard, and say, here you go, and here it is. So today we're going to take a look at the Schroeder, talk about if she's worth the grind in the dockyard, or not and go over her play styles and the like. So before we get too much further, I just ask that you guys go down to the comment section, leave a comment and drop a like on this video if you don't mind. Uh, pleasing the YouTube algorithm gods is unfortunately like 80% of YouTube nowadays. So if you don't mind doing that so that this video gets appeased for the gods, that would be very generous. I'd also like to give a massive thank you to the channel's Patreons for making this review possible. I'm not supported by, or, wait, how do I normally say that? I'm not associated with or supported by Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. I'm doing this after stream, so fun fact, I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, so this is, uh, we're getting up there in the amount of hours I've been awake. But anyway, uh, thanks to these guys whose names should be appearing on screen right now. The generous donations from these Patreons make this review and all ship review, ship reviews on this channel possible. So if you feel so generous, the link to the Patreon is in the description down below. Again, massive shout outs to, to those guys. Alright, so the Schroeder. Now, as always, art department knocked it out of the park here. Lots of small details on this ship. The ship itself looks beautiful. I actually really like the way this ship looks. She's smaller than the Aguirre, and it's kind of weird because by looking at it, you won't really know due to the fact that most of these German, you know, dual barrel guns that we see are large caliber guns for the hull that they're on. And you know, I'm used to seeing, you know, the 15 inch guns, the Siegfried, and then we get this. Yeah, it's a little weird looking, but you know what? I like the way it looks. And as always, art department, those guys did an excellent job. So. What is this ship? This is a German large cruiser that, according to War Gaming, is a secondary cruiser. And, I mean, if you look at it, just, you know, from the appearances, there is a mountain of German secondaries on the side. And these are 128s. These are the good German secondaries. But let's go ahead and take a look at this ship right now. Now, I do have a commander and module built on it and have played this ship quite a bit. This is, of course, after stream. We played this ship for... Uh, most of the four-hour stream last night and it was something it was certainly a learning experience so I have everything on this ship as it was for most of that stream so let's go ahead and take a look at her so um, starting out with her camouflage this is not the ca well this is one of the camouflages you get for the dockyard of course but this is the uh, war paint camo that you get with the dockyard which adds in the crew standing here which is pretty neat it's nice to, to give you a scale of the ship. I mean, again, I just call these guns little, but look how look how massive they are when compared to a human. So again, war paint camo. Again, art department looks very nice. Although I do wish I could get this hull paint without all this extra fra fra on here. Like, don't get me wrong, the war paint camo it looks cool. If you like this type of stuff, that's neat. But you know, I, I don't want to go into battle with. Um, you know, tinsel all around the ship, if you will. So, yeah, but that's what you get in the war paint camo. This is the normal uh, default permanent camo. Uh, you get blue or brown. Two very odd color choices. I mean, I guess blue because, you know, water. But, yeah. Okay. I stuck with the blue. For her economic bonuses... Uh, she does get the normal tier 9 premium bonus, 10% to credits, and 100% boost to ship, commander, and free XP. And this is the boosters I was running for the rest of the night, the green boosters. On top of our, of course, already baked-in premium economy. 
All right, for armor, for those of you that have played Siegfried and Aguirre, this shouldn't come as any surprise to you because, well, it's it's awfully similar. <laughs> if you, I mean, again, look, it, it, it's literally the same thing, but the back is cut down. You've got that lowered stern deck. Yeah. So 27mm bow, 90mm upper belt. That's, of course, very nice. Uh, her belt is 190 millimeters. Going back to the stern, again 27 millimeter stern, 27 millimeter stern and bow deck armor, 30 millimeter mid deck armor. Her citadel is just at the waterline, and just like the a gear and the Siegfried, you have this belt that's you know, got a little turtle back action going on here, and then this one's attached to the torpedo protection. So you kind of have this weird spaced armor effect going on here, like you do with the French cruisers, although it doesn't really work like the French cruisers, because despite, again, having kind of the same s setup, these ships aren't overly hard to set at all. Those of you that have played against them know that, and yeah. But it is a relatively tough cruiser. The armor is decent. Just like with the Siegfried and the gear. If you're angled, you can bounce a lot of shells, especially with this 90mm up about. Again, so this isn't an instant, you know, you get shot with a, uh, you know, a, a modern, a modern, a uh, common caliber battleship shell at tier 9 and 10, and you instantly get, you know, overmatch. It can actually bounce quite a bit, and it does. So that is nice having that. In terms of survivability, with uh, the commander build that I have on, which I do have SC on right now, she has 63,350 hit points. Without the commander build, it's just under 60,000 at 59,000. 22% torpedo damage reduction. Artillery, she has four of the 305mm guns. Now, you might be thinking, oh, these are Gears guns, aren't they? Welp, you we take a look at a gear. They're not. <laughs> these are actually the guns, I believe, of the Koenig. Ha, huh. so, yeah. We'll get more on these guns in a second. So, she has a reload time. Again, on the build that I have on her right now of 15 seconds. That is with the reload module equipped. And this is the optimum build, in my opinion. Uh, she has a 180 time of 24.6 seconds. Maximum dispersion of 188 meters. That is, again, with the uh, module. Without the module, it's a little over 200. I believe at like 202 meters maximum dispersion at 18.4 kilometers. Her HE has a maximum shell damage of 3,400 with a 23% chance of causing a fire on the target, 76 millimeters of HE pin, and an initial velocity of 850 meters a second. Her AP has a maximum damage of 8,715, that is with the heavy AP skill, and has an initial velocity of 855 meters a second. Fun fact, this AP has the lowest alpha out of all of the tier 9 305mm guns. Despite having one of the lowest gun counts, actually the lowest gun count of the large tier 9 cruisers. So, yeah. What she does gain in the reload time over the gear, because she does have a faster reload time than the gear, is pretty much lost in the fact that she has a lower AP alpha. So that's fun. Now her secondary, she has 20 of these 128mm secondaries per side. And again, these are the good secondaries, the good 128s that do pin 32mm of armor. So with the build that I have on them, I have 3.2 seconds as their maximum reload time and 8.8 kilometers as their maximum range. All I have on this right now is the secondary flag. More on why in a second. So they have a maximum damage of 1500. 6% chance, chance of causing a fire, fire per shell, 32 millimeters of HE pin, and 900 meters a second initial muzzle velocity. Her 150s, you get three of these triple gun 150s. They reload in 6.3 seconds, maximum range of 8.8 .8 kilometers, maximum damage is 1700, and a 9% chance of causing a fire per shell, and 38 millimeters of pin with a 960 meter, meter a second muzzle, initial muzzle velocity. Alright, depth charges. Yes, the ship gets depth charges. Like, not airstrikes, depth charges. More on that when we get to the gameplay se uh, section. A, she has an A rating of 81. She has 8 of these quad mounted 20mm guns. She has 7 of the twin mounted 55mm guns. And then the 20, 128 do count towards AA. 
Maneuverability, maps to speed at 34.1 knots with the speed flag. Turn circle race at 840 meters, and a rudder shift time of 13.9 seconds. Concealment with both the module and the commander skill, you can get this ship's concealment range down to 10.2 kilometers, which is very nice. All right, let's go look at her box O gimmicks. So, she has a repair party, thankfully, 380 HP per second, is active for 28 seconds, reloads in 76 seconds, four charges of this with uh, superintendent. Engine boost, 15% engine boost, pretty nice, which is active for 180 seconds and then reloads in 85.5 seconds. So with the speed flag, you can get this ship up to 39 knots, which is very fast. Very fast indeed for a ship of this size. Then, of course, good old German Hydro, 6km Hydro, active for 120 seconds, reloads in 114 seconds. In Damage Con, that is active for 5 seconds, reloads in 57 seconds. Alright, let's go over my Commander Module build since I already have that on here. So, I do have Luchens on, and I am running Last Stand, that way, when our modules get knocked out, they are still usable, like the engine and the rudder. And we're not just sitting there dead. Then I have gun feeder to get that increased, well, decreased swap time between AP and HE. That actually came really in handy with this ship. And then we have Luchus's improved Grease the Gears skill, which gives the turrets the ability to almost keep up when the ship is maneuvering. And I do have Demolition Expert on here. This is because, you know, Luchin's ones was on a set a different ship earlier. I would probably swap this over to something like Consumable Enhancements, which will give you a boost to the engine boost and the hydro time. So that is one I would swap over from this build. Then I have a drill and rush, that way when we take damage, we get a boost to our, our reload time. And in this case it's a boost of 0.2% per HP loss. Per percent per point of HP lost. And then Heavy AP for a 5% boost to the damage that we get from our main caliber guns, which is always good. That's just free damage. Superintendent for the charge of the heal, hydro, and engine boost. Survivability expert for more HP for the ship. You get 450 HP per tier, so that's another 4,000, well, almost 4,000 HP with this ship. And then concealment expert, which gives us a 10% boost to our concealment. And for the modules, we went with Main Armored Mod 1 to keep our main battery guns in the fight. Then we went with Damage Con Mod 1 because fire suck. This decreases the, chance, the chances of your ship catching on fire by 5% and reduces the risk of flooding by 3%. Then I went with Amy Systems Mod 1 to give the dispersion a bit of a bonk more in towards the tolerable direction. And this gives us a 7% boost to that dispersion. Then I went with Damage Con Mod 2 because fires suck, and this reduces the fire and flooding recovery time by 15%. Then I went with Consumer System Mod 1 to give us another 10% boost to the ship's detectability. And then I went with Main Battery Mod 3 to give the ship a 12% boost to its reload time. And that is the build that I ran on this ship for most of the night. We're going to go ahead and transition over to the gameplay section. Alright guys, the voice over Mountbatten here. And, well, the Schroeder. The Schroeder has a massive flaw with, well, not really it, but with the game in general. And that this ship was advertised and pushed as a secondary brawler German large cruiser. You know, the, the Siegfried's replacement, essentially. And, well, the thing that killed the Siegfried pretty much kills the Schroeder for me and that you cannot build into the secondaries beyond the modules. You can take the secondary dispersion module and the secondary reload module. That's it. You get a 20% boost to the, to the secondary dispersion and a boost to the reload time. That's it. That's all you can get out of these secondary guns from their base performance. And they don't have any improved accuracy in them versus every other ship's secondaries, at least not to my eyes, and if they do, it's nowhere near enough. It's like the Napoli, where the Napoli, by default, just has the best secondary dispersion in the game, because they had to code it like that in order to make the Napoli a secondary cruiser. But when it comes to the Schroeder, they obviously didn't do that. So, that's it. That's all you can do with your secondary cruiser, is put two modules on it, and that's it. And you know what? It's not enough. It's nowhere near enough. 
these secondaries aren't really accurate enough to do anything besides hit battleships and other large cruisers from close range. Even with as full of a secondary build as you can get on this ship, which the replay you're watching right now is with a secondary build on this ship, if you're wondering what that performance is like. That's what you're watching in the background right now. It's, it's just not enough. It's not enough to warrant wasting those two modules on that. So what I actually wound up doing for the most of the night was running a main battery build on it with the reload module. And that gets your reload down to uh, 15 seconds rather than the 17 second base reload that you have with the secondary module. And the guns on the Schroeder, they are the 3-5mm guns. They, again, aren't the Gears guns as much as that would have been nice. So they don't have the same punch as the gear although again it, it, it is similar because it, 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 it is German AP you know German AP is across the board good so you have that going for you with the Schroeder and you know you have eight guns one less than the gear but a quicker reload time again but less alpha so it, it kind of evens out at the end of the day and when the guns do connect they, they do connect with authority they are decent for that part but, I mean, a gear. <laughs> a gear still exists. A gear is still for sale. A gear is for free XP. You can get a gear completely for free. This ship, you have to grind through the dockyard and then pay around 6,000 the blooms to get it at the end of the day. But a gear is completely free. Or just $77 if you want to buy it outright. So, is there enough here? to warrant getting this over the gear, In my opinion, no, not really. What sets her apart, the secondaries don't really do much. Now, what I did find out throughout the night is that when I put the main battery build on, the performance that was lost from the secondaries was more than made up for by the improvements you get from the main battery guns by putting a reload module on it and getting this the reload down to 15.8 seconds, and then by putting the dispersion module on it for the main battery guns and getting a 7% boost to your dispersion to get your maximum dispersion under 200 meters at 18 kilometers. Now with that good fire rate along with the improved dispersion and the fact that you know this is you know a large cruiser you are getting damage from several sources because everyone wants to kill you because you're a nice squishy large cruiser in their mind. From the adrenaline rush too I did find the reload getting you know down to a pretty nice level relatively quickly and the ship's HP is you know still at, you know above a half and you still have pretty decent RPM with your guns because of the uh, drill and rush kick that you got going on that was pretty decent and the ship is fast with the engine boost going you can achieve a top speed of 39 knots which is really fast now couple that with something else that the ship has that is pretty unique with its concealment the Schroeder's concealment gets it down to 10 kilometers 10.5 kilometers on a large cruiser now originally with a full secondary build with the um, the range and dispersion module equipped and the flag you get your secondaries out to 10 kilometers and your range is 10.5 kilometers so ideally essentially when a ship detects you they are in your secondary range so again, on paper, if you look at that, you go, oh, that's actually pretty good. It's just like the Schlieffen, where, you know, the ship's detection range is 12.5 kilometers. The ship's secondary range is 12.5 kilometers. So when I'm detected there, my secondary range and my secondary range can just rip into them. Yes, again, on paper, it looks like that. And yes, that is true. Essentially, when something detects you with a secondary build, they are within your secondary battery range. And in the right situation, in the right match up against the right enemy team sure that'll work the first game i had in the ship which is what you're watching right now with the secondary build that happened the stars aligned that happened there weren't any cvs there weren't any radar ships near me i engaged mostly larger ships battleships and heavy cruisers ships that despite the poor dispersion of the secondaries there was enough ship there that the amount of crap that my secondary gunners were throwing out had something to hit ironically this wasn't the most secondary battery hits i had tonight 
The most secondary battery hits I had tonight was when I was running a main battery build. <laughs> so, yeah, the boost you get to the secondary performance by throwing the two modules on isn't worth compens uh, losing the boost that you get to the main battery gun performance. So I would definitely put the main battery modules on and let it rip like that if you do get the Schroeder. So... Besides that, I mean, there's some other odd choices with this show. So turret number four can 360, which is pretty nice. And from the bow in, you have decent gun angles for a German ship. But if you have to kite in this thing, which most German ships are really good at kiting because like with the battleships, they have the secondary uh, guns like the GK. GK is fantastic for kiting. It's got great. Uh, it's got a great main belt armor. It's got those great 128 secondaries that can get most of them on target when you're steeply angled enough to bounce most of the enemy shells at you. Schlieffen has a ton of secondaries on it. Great for farming. Uh, Hindenburg's amazing at farming. This ship sucks at it. <laughs> you cannot get the, the forward two turrets on target without just showing more than enough skin to absolutely just get slapped. So you only have eight guns in the fight. I'm sorry, four guns in the fight. Four 305s in the fight with anemic German HE. And secondaries that can't really hit what they're shooting at at that range unless, again, it's a massive battleship or a large cruiser. You don't have any torpedoes either on the ship. And then we come to the depth charges. I had a really freaking awkward situation with this ship because of the depth charges. Don't turn into Doritos. Whoa. What? 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 Oh, come on. I'm, like, already over it. Really? So he's... Oh, right here. Hello. This is incredibly awkward. I can't drop depth charges on him, and he's keeping up with me! Oh my god, this is hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Where's the torpedo icon, even? Is he under me now? Uh... Okay, that was so dumb! That was so dumb! So in that clip you just watched, the submarine, because submarine, was outrunning me at the surface. And I couldn't drop airstrikes on him because, for whatever reason, they gave the Schroeder deck-mounted depth charges. As you saw in the clip. So... <laughs> why? <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. They said that they include deck-mounted depth charges for ships that historically had it. Schroeder was never built. This is a paper ship. It, this is a paper ship, I should say. So, why does it have deck-mounted depth charges wargaming? You expect a large cruiser, granted, you know, one with 10 kilometer concealment and, you know, an engine boost, to sail over a submarine and roll depth charges off the deck onto their head. When the DDs can barely do that, you know, the ships that are fast with, you know, great stealth, they can barely do that because they get spotted and eviscerated. So, yeah, weird design choice there. So, I don't really see what's in this ship that you can't just get from a gear. A gear has better 305mm guns. Her turrets are in a more conventional layout. You have, you know, the two in the front, one in the back, triple gun turrets. So when you are steeply angled in the gear, you have six guns to use rather than the four guns you have on the Schroeder. A gear gets airstrikes. Well, damage con airstrikes. A gear has essentially the same armor scheme as the Schroeder, and in fact has more HP than the Schroeder. Does have the engine boost, but I've never really seen a use for that in a gear. 
and it doesn't have the secondaries that are very situational. So, yeah, the only reason I would say pick this up over the uh, gear is if you have to absolutely have a secondary cruiser that isn't an Napoli for some reason. And even then, again, the secondaries are aren't really useful because you can't build on them. You're not gonna have you know. 11 kilometer secondaries. You're not going to have accurate secondaries at all in this thing. These secondaries aren't good for hitting DDs. Uh, I, I can count on one hand the amount of shells that hit DDs in our four hour play session of almost exclusively Schroeder on stream last night. And I, it, it wouldn't require more than half of my hand. So, yeah. In summary, Schroeder's decent, but a gear exists. And a gear's free XP. A gear's completely free. Now, there's a very strong argument, and I, I do support this position too, that this is a tier 9 premium ship. It does only cost 6,000 doubloons once you go through the dockyard. So, if you want a tier 9 premium ship that, you know, has a tier 9 economy where, essentially, if you go into battle, shoot something, you make money. Like, don't get me wrong, this ship can do damage. The guns with the main battery build on on it has have enough um, RPM, and again, German AP is still punchy. You can do damage in it. If you play the gear, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the ship's a gear with one less gun, essentially, once you really boil it down. So if you play the gear or any of the, you know, the super cruises, at, well, large cruises at Tier 9, you can play this rotor. You can make money with it. If you, you know, want to pick up a cheap Tier 9 premium ship for essentially free, or you can get the gear, which is a Tier 9 premium ship that is completely free. So that's my recommendations. Get the gear. Overall, I give the ship a 6 out of 10. It's, it's average. It's, it's a slightly retooled a gear, pretty much, in my mind. That's slightly worse. And you can have the real one for free. So, yeah. That's my review of the Schroeder. It's a hard pass. Get the Renown 44 and stop the dockyard, essentially. Unless you're a collector and you just gotta have the ship. Again, 6,000 doubloons for a Tier 9 premium ship is a really good price. And, of course, all the stuff you get along the way is really good, too. And definitely worth the 6,000 doubloons and the grind, in my opinion. But, yeah, if you miss this one, you're not missing much, guys. And I wouldn't stress over trying to grind this thing out. So guys, that's my two cents on the Schroeder. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on way to 45,000 subs, thanks to you guys. I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.